here's an example of the game. It's at Nick's Games forward slash Blockland, so you can go and look at it online. There's two other players are these two other tabs. Move it in that and it's echoed in all my other tabs. Run over here, up back. You'll see that that character has moved in all the tabs. So let's have a look at um, how this is achieved firstly initially on the server side. In the resources you'll find in the node apps a folder called Blockland. Go in the folder called Blackland and, and you'll see this file here. should be familiar to you if you've done the socket.io um, section of this course. Incredibly simple. Once we get a socket connection, we're defining some custom data that we're going to call the user data. It initializes to 0, 0, 0 in the X, Y, Z and heading. And then we emit to the socket on the client side our socket ID, our connected ID. And when we disconnect, we broadcast, in other words, to all of the sockets in our cells, that a player has been deleted using the event delete player and passing back the ID of this particular socket that's been deleted. When we're initialized, when init's called, that's, that's, so that's been emitted from the client, then we set in our user data we set in our model, so that's which character we are, what colorway we're using, we'll come to that later. X, Y, and Z values all coming in from the data. Heading, PB, so that's the pitch and bank, which are the, both set to the same. And the default action, which we're initializing to idle. And then we get the update. Every time the socket on the client side does update using the animate method and here we set all our user data we don't need to set our model and color because that's defined once and on our chat message we use an io2 a particular id sending the chat message telling it which socket id sent the message and what the message is and then this time we're listening on port 2002 now this is where all the magic happens. We're using set interval. This is called 25 times a second, 40 milliseconds elapse for each interval. We get in the namespace of the default socket IO namespace. We're going through all our sockets. We get the actual socket connected with that ID. We get the user data model if that's undefined then we can't do anything but as long as it's defined we're fine and then into an array that we've called that we've defined called pack we push a new object and this has got our socket id what model it is what color it is x y and z values what its heading is what its pitch and bank is and what current action it's doing and we create all them, pack all, pack all them together and assuming our pack length is greater than zero then we emit from the server to the client the remote data event sending this array. And that covers all that we need to do server side to have a functioning multiplayer game. You can see how useful Node.js and Socket.io are. And in the next video, we'll look at how we use these facilities client side to both send data up to the server and respond to the data that, we, that is returned from the server. So 
quick pause and I'll see you in a minute. This video is part of a Udemy course. To get the full course at a great discount, pull down the description and click the link.